So how's the response been the last couple of days? Is that getting ready for tomorrow? Terrific. I mean, you know, appropriate. These guys hate to lose, and, um, you know, so we kind of get up pull ourselves up by the bootstraps, dust ourselves off, and we're ready to go. And, you know, you have to be able to do that, uh, especially in a good league when you're playing good teams, and there's going to be ups and downs, and the teams that can respond to the ups and downs the best are going to do some good things. And um, I do know one thing, an undefeated team is not going to win the league. So <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the reality of the league. I mean, I don't know if we've ever had it where – this quickly, everybody has at least one uh, on that side of the ledger. So uh, our guys have been terrific. We've had great days of practice, great film sessions, and you know. But that doesn't surprise me. That, that that's who I get to coach every day, and they we kind of all lift each other up, you know. So, but there's also an appropriate. They don't like to lose. I like guys like that that don't like to lose, and uh, we have that. Yeah, sometimes you do. Watching San Diego State get 20 offensive rebounds. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, what, uh, what came to mind there? Yeah, that's a huge challenge, and you know, but I mean, come on, there's, you know, we got a long, long history of playing at San Diego State, and that's one of the consistent things they've done year in and year out. Been a great rebounding team, you know, that, that they're physical. They got a lot of bodies, a lot of athletes, and they go get the ball. It always is. Every you know, I think it begins there. You know, when you look at the history of this series, I think that was one of the things that I was like, oh man, because you can, and and you know, I think that's what hurt us a little bit too. It, in the last game, um, we had some great defensive uh, possessions and didn't finish them with the rebound, and so they're not great defensive possessions. We wasted those, and. Uh, you know, that's I think that's what San Diego State does a great job of too, is they they're you gotta you gotta finish the possession. A couple weeks ago we were talking about Roddy and his you know, how he wasn't scoring and now two games since then, twelve seven. Is that kind of you know, you you said, you know, his scoring gonna come, is that kind of the start of, of things? Yeah, he's just gonna get better and better at it because of the weapons that we do have and the space that's available for him because of the guys around him that, that makes it easier for him and then you know he works at it you know he gets in the gym and we spend time developing that and different ways to you know to get to the rim different ways to finish at the rim and then shooting shooting just put some time in and and you know he's got solid mechanics and it's just rep 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 and he'll get better at it you admitted that, that you know that drought was getting to him a little bit you know did you see that at all it gets to everybody you know i mean the best shooters in the world have droughts and it gets to the best shooters in the world so uh i think it's always you know it's always great when they get to see it go in a few times the the hole expands after you do that sometimes it's you know what was his it's like, like it's like my putting sometimes, I swear I'm looking at a hole that's that big, like the, it's not bigger than the ball. And I think when you're going through a drought, you feel like that, like that ball's not going to fit through that. And then when, then when you're, you know, as a player, when you're, when it's going great, the hole looks that big, you know, like 10 balls could throw, go through that. So. How proud are you of the way he just kind of was resilient through all that? Yeah, and, and you know, He's developing the toughness. He's developing the consistency. All those things that you need to be a great player. And you know he's young, and it takes time to develop that. And um, the he's never had to have that consistency of accountability. And that's you know he, he's he appreciates it that that we bring that to him. And that's the start. If they don't like having that, then they they can't get better at it. And. He, he's embraced that, being coached hard and, and getting, you know, uh, expecting, you know, the, the expectations of what he has to bring every day are really high. And that, that is, so that was a little shock for him, I think. Last year with knees at San Diego State, did you feel like he was back and came in and contributed? This year it seems like he's great. So where has he taken his greatest strides and how much more difficult has he handled this year? He's, he's just, everything he, he's done, he's done before. Now he just seems to be doing it at a higher, higher level. and. I mean, his shooting numbers have been amazing. His physicality, his consistency on the glass, and all those things, and his ability to get to the free throw line—all those things have been really, really good. He's just taken it to another level.
In 20 years, when, when you're a grandpa on a porch swing with a glass of lemonade, what will you remember about Max's performance hmm. last year? Well, I think, and it won't just be, you know, it'll be the permeating theme of his competitiveness and how, you know, we, we do a leadership thing and a kind of a book club with our, we call it our lions and our young lions. And, and I remember I learned a lot from that book because sometimes you think your leaders have to be the most vocal and, the, and the, they're talking all the time and, they're, and that's just not him. His leadership comes from the way he brings that competitive grit, and the other guys look at that and be like, "All right, we, we got to bring that ourselves." And I think he elevates that, and and kind of that find a way mentality and do whatever it takes for the team mentality. And um, you know, when I look back on that, like I said, you know, I was always trying to get guys like that to talk more. Yeah, they have to talk more. But that's not maybe their complete role. That well, great. guess what? Tyson's a great talker. He can really do that. Max can keep getting better at it, but he brings a different kind of leadership to that team. And you know that, that's what we talked about in that book. And when we went through it with some of the young guys, we're like, okay, who does this remind you of? I can't remember who the story was about, but about a leader like that that would just. I mean, it was pretty graphic what he went through to help them win a game <laughs> and they're like oh that one's max and so i'm like yeah that, that's a good point and drimmick was like that a lot where i was always just square peg round hole like you got to talk you got to talk and and i remember some when the navy seals guys came here and worked with our team for the other for some time they said forget that let that go let him be who he is and let these other guys you know so who those guys are, are is so valuable when you have so I think that's the the thing that you know it's not the made shots the missed shots all that stuff it's just that competitive grit that he would he, you know he, they show it on that highlight video quite a bit and you're like man you could see it in his eyes and and so that's valuable for a team you know that's valuable for a team and so th those are the memories that you'll have is what he you know what he did for this school and this Boise State program. And, and you know, uh, I think you heard me tell the story about McKillop uh, sending a text to me. Did I tell that to you guys? No. Was on, uh, the podcast, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a cool story because uh, he sent me at Bob McKillop is a coach at Davidson, mm -hmm. and he coached his son who had grown up in the program, kind of similar situation to Max. It was a good player. and. And he said, and this was kind of out of the blue. We don't text each other a lot or anything. It was just kind of random. And, and he said, you know, one of my biggest regrets in life, and, and this is a wise old man, a great coach I respect a ton, he said, was I never praised my son publicly and I never praised him in front of the team because I, he didn't really want that and I didn't want that, but it wasn't right. And he goes, I really regret it. I hope you're not. And I was like, you completely I, I completely did that for years and years and years now we're beyond that in the locker room we're beyond that out here because it is what it is and, and but but that text meant a lot to me because I'm like yeah I would say that about any other guy why wouldn't I say that about Max and it, and so I guess I've gotten a little better at that thanks to Bob McKillop it's pretty cool do you think Max is going to use last year? Is that still in his head? No, we, we move on, you know. Uh, we we move on. He um, – and when I say move on, I mean, we enjoyed it and all that. And like you said, maybe 20 years from now, we'll, hey, look what game we found, uh, you know, and maybe watch it together and things like that. I don't know. But you move on as competitors and, and you're embracing the next one and – um, we know, you know, we are aware of the surroundings. We know that you're at the part of the season where you're like, okay, seniors, uh, we, the barn, we can see the barn. And so we appreciate every competitive situation we get to be in together and all of us. And, you know, that's always the hard thing about having seniors is those last ones are so final. And you've been through so many battles together and all that. So we're embracing them, enjoying them, and create some more good ones. What does it mean for the program? To, it's the first regular season game, I think, on national CBS, and just to be the spotlight of college basketball and, and tomorrow and just to have a chance to, you know, make a little bit of statement, I guess, for Boise State basketball. Uh, what, what's the opportunity like? Well, the, the, just, you know, I think we've talked about this a lot, where milestones, 
when you when you're getting milestones they usually mean you're doing something and um you know this that's a big one and it's really neat and, and we don't really talk about it much as a group at all because our job's the same we always say that our job's the same whether it's in front of one or ten thousand now it helps to have ten thousand <laughs> when it's your home but our jobs are the same so that that's not our focus our focus is is what we have to our process what we have to do and and how we have to prepare for the opponent what's the biggest challenge of playing at 11 a.m we kind of like it uh we have a protocol that we do when we play it's that's different you know we adjusted it over the years and it, you know it's been great we we, we love it not it's kind of you know uh, no it's kind of what i was going to say it's it's i see you know it's kind of torture sitting around waiting for games especially when you're on the road those late games you're just you know uh, there's only so much you can do and the hay's in the barn by then and so we you know when you wake up that day you let's go you're ready to go what's your relationship with Clark Kellerman? we uh, i believe he did one of our games in the first four is that true I, I i've had some experiences with him where you know i don't know him that well but uh i think he's done one or two of our games before i don't know Maybe it was like Gonzaga. Or something. Yeah, just a few games here and there, and um, that's about it. If I'm remembering right, probably forgetting something, but uh, but it goes way back because he did a lot of our Gonzaga games, I think, back in the day. That's it. That's easy. Let's go. Yeah, it's good to have you know that. that that kind of announcing and that, you know, it's cool. Is it sold out yet, Nate? Very close. We're getting close. Last row only, right, BJ? Is that it? Yeah.